Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to attempt the impossible. We're going to choose between the Mont Blanc 149, that venerable classic pen that we all know and some of us love and some of us feel very divisive about, and that other amazing pen, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age, which many of us also feel very strongly about. So if you had to choose between these two very different and very interesting pens, which one would you choose? Let's find out. So in choosing between the Visconti Homo Sapiens and the Mont Blanc 149, we're going to do it very methodically. We're going to start with the various materials that are used in each pen. Then we're going to talk about and compare their nibs. Then we're going to get into their filling mechanisms and how they differ. Then we're going to go through some of the other features of each pen and how they stack up. Then we're going to get into the overall design, the writing experience, the value, which pen I think is better. And then if you stay to the end, and I really think you should, we're going to choose which one we should either buy or hold on to. So it is hard to make the case that the resin in the Mont Blanc 149 is superior to the basaltic lava and resin mix that's used in the Visconti Homo Sapiens. Now essentially what they do is they take this substance that's spewed out of Mount Etna in Sicily and they grind it up into a fine powder, I imagine, and mix it with the resin and then make the pen material from that. Now, supposedly, this makes the pen virtually indestructible. It also makes it hygroscopic, which is a word I learned when I purchased this pen. And essentially what that means is that it has the quality where it absorbs some moisture. So if you're clutching the pen as you write with it and your hands get a little sweaty, the pen can actually absorb that and take away the clamminess from your hand, which is pretty remarkable. It also has a bit of grain and texture and it's relatively light though heavier than the Mont Blanc. So it's a pretty extraordinary substance. So if we take these two base substances, the proprietary resin in the Mont Blanc versus the basaltic volcanic materials mixed with resin in the Homo sapiens, and compare these, I think the winner is clearly the Visconti because that is a truly unique and interesting substance. Nevertheless, there is a dark side to it, not just because it's actually a dark material in the Homo sapien, but because it's heavier than the Mont Blanc. And this does have an effect on your long writing sessions. So you have to keep that in mind. But if we're scoring this purely on materials, that's one in the Visconti's column. Let's get into the nibs. So this is really a battle of 18 karat gold nibs. On the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age, we have a lovely rose gold nib with a sort of stylized fleur-de-lis design. Very beautiful, very well rendered, an absolutely gorgeous and fantastic nib. On the Mont Blanc, we have a two-tone yellow and white gold, 18 karat gold nib, which personally to me is one of the most beautiful nibs. It's also one of the largest fountain pen nibs you're likely to encounter anywhere. I'm actually wondering if anyone has ever done a larger nib. I'm not sure you could and be comfortable. It would start to get silly. So it's a fantastic nib. Both are made of amazing materials. To me though, I have to give this one to the Mont Blanc. That two-tone nib is absolutely stunning and an icon in the fountain pen world. I do love and admire the Visconti nib, but the Mont Blanc in this case is the clear-cut winner. 
Now let's talk about the filling mechanisms. So in the Montblanc 149, we have a screw piston filling mechanism that's very reliable. They've been using it for years. It works extraordinarily well. After some time, you need to have it serviced because it'll start to stick and not be as effective. Now I've had mine for 11 years and that hasn't happened to me yet. My 149 feels the same as my 146. It's about a year old. So it's hanging in there, but it probably should just go for a nice maintenance rest for a while, but uh, we'll see about that. So the piston fill mechanism on the Mont Blanc is excellent, but it is a bit fiddly as you have to screw and unscrew. Now let's contrast that with the Visconti Homo Sapien. This has what they call their power fill system. Basically you unscrew the back, pop it up, pop it down like a vac fill. And it does a fantastic job of filling the pen very quickly, almost greedily. It makes this nice little thirsty drinking noise if you listen carefully and does a great job of filling the pen. It has titanium in it, which certainly sounds like something that's going to last for a very long time. So I think on this one, between the filling mechanisms with the Mont Blanc being a little fiddly, needing occasional lubrication versus the Visconti, which probably also needs occasional uh, lubrication, but it's a bit more sort of precise and maybe even slightly over engineered but that can be charming too so i'm going to give this one to the visconti let's speak about some of the other features of these pens so the mont blanc 149 has a screw on cap and a very traditional clip it's very effective very lovely but the pen itself is pretty straightforward now the visconti has this arching crescent shaped clip that's really interesting and very different very thick but it grabs your pocket very effectively the cap itself has this hook safe lock mechanism it's like nothing else that i've seen out there it's very effective at holding that cap in place while sort of making a compromise between a screw on cap and a quick release cap so it technically screws in locks and then it does not come undone without a bit of pushing it and unlocking it. Very effective, very smooth, and very fun. And it prevents the cap from coming loose in your pocket and getting a nice big ink stain on your dress shirt as I am famous for doing. Now, that has never happened with me with my Mont Blanc either, but it is a bit of screwing with that where all day you're sort of unscrewing and screwing in the cap. It's a lot of that as you use this pen if you're using it at work. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'm going to give this one to the Visconti. Let's talk about the overall design of these pens. The Mont Blanc 149 is a true classic. It is an elongated cigar-shaped pen with the Mont Blanc Glacier six-sided star logo atop the cap. It tapers beautifully. It's maybe a little boring because it's black and trimmed with various gold trim finishes. It's both copied and copied by other pens, which seem to both diminish it a bit and elevate it to true icon status. Nevertheless, many pens are shaped like this and colored like this and it can get a bit lost in a collection in its black iteration. If you're lucky enough to find a burgundy one, that does change things up a bit. Now the Visconti Homo Sapiens is more of like a baton shaped. It's very robust, strong looking, um, very aggressive and really sort of hard like rock itself. It has this look to it as if it's going to weigh maybe two pounds or so. It's actually quite lighter than you expect, but a very original design that looks like nothing else. It's very much rooted in the Visconti family, especially with the design cues in that crescent shaped clip. 
So, how you would match these up, because they are so different. I mean, the Mont Blanc is like classic, like a Rolls Royce or a Bentley. And the Visconti is like over the top, like a Bugatti or a Lamborghini. So how do you compare a Rolls Royce and a Lamborghini? It really comes down to taste and what you're looking for. If you want a classic pen that has truly tested the years and has remained iconic, then you want that Mont Blanc. Although the styling cues are firmly rooted in the 1950s and the 1960s. So that's something to be aware of. If you want something that looks a little bit more modern and a little bit more creative and original, then you're going to want the Visconti. So how do you weigh that? I suppose I'd have to give it the Visconti just because it is a very much original standalone design, but I'm doing this begrudgingly and because I feel like I need to for this video. Now we're going to talk about the writing experience. If we were going to extend the automobile analogy, this would be like the handling. How do each of these pens handle? So let's start with the Mont Blanc. The Mont Blanc is a fantastic pen. It's an absolute joy to write with. You've heard me write peons about this pen, literally. I have an entire video that's just on my love for this pen. And there's a good reason why. The nib is very sensitive. It's very fun and interesting to use. It's one of my smoothest pens. It never skips. It's a joy to write with. I find that with minute variations and how much I let the weight of the pen as I guide it across the paper, I can get some line variation and write in a very interesting manner. The pen itself is quite light which makes it very easy for writing for long periods of time. I use this quite extensively for long journaling sessions. I take it to work and I write notes in my ledger book with it. It's very comfortable. There's something about the girthiness of that pen and my larger hands that just feel very relaxed as I write with it and I cradle it in my hand. I've never got a cramped hand feeling as I do with some more slender pens. So the writing experience for me is top notch with that pen. I absolutely enjoy it. Now, the writing experience with the Visconti Homo Sapiens is a bit different. It is a very precise writer. The nib is very nice. It doesn't have as much spring as the Mont Blanc. It feels a bit stiffer, but then I really don't press hard, so that's kind of neither here nor there. Also, with the Visconti, it feels like it has quite a bit of tipping material. I feel like it would be more accommodating to different angles of approach. Although for me, with each pen, I am very similar in how I hold them. It's very smooth. They're both very free-flowing pens. It's never skipped a beat. It's a real joy to write with. Now, where there is some issues for me is that it's much heavier, or at least feels much heavier in hand than the Mont Blanc does. So after writing with it for some time, I do feel a bit fatigued. And I get to the point where I'm like, okay, this is fun. I love this pen, but I'm going to grab my 149 or some other pen. Also, the hook mechanism on the cap is sort of within where I touch the pen. So I'm very much aware of sort of the bumpiness of that. So that's another consideration as I write with it. And I've never posted the Visconti Homo Sapiens. I hear that you can post it, but I never have because I'm just afraid of scratching it. And truth be told, I'm starting to get away from posting pens in general. In the past, I've always posted the 149. I no longer post that either. So in overall writing experience, the actual 
joy of writing with it, I have to give this one to the Montblanc 149. It's just easier to write with for a long time and there's less going on in the grip and it's just lighter and a bit more of a joy as you steer it across the page. Now we're getting into one of the touchiest subjects in fountain pen collecting in general, and that's value. Which pen is a better value? So the Mont Blanc 149 is knocking on $1,000. It's usually somewhere in the nines, depending on the trim. If you get it with a calligraphy nib, you're over $1,000. The Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age retails for around 900, but it's commonly available for around 700 and change. So that's a $200 difference. Now, what do you get with these two pens? Well, with the Mont Blanc, you get all the years in brand heritage on one side or brand markup on the other side. So there's a premium for that if you're someone who wants to be recognized for owning a Mont Blanc. And I'm not going to criticize that. There's different reasons for buying a pen and that's just as valid as anything else. If you want to show that you have a Mont Blanc, that's fine. So if you place some value in that Glacier logo, then consider that. The Visconti is a fairly new company. I believe it was founded in 1988. It's from Florence, which is one of my favorite cities in the world. So it's a new heritage, but it's a wonderful heritage. Italian pens are usually slightly mad, and this one is no different. It's one of the things I love about it. The Viscontis are slightly just random and a little bit strange, and that makes it absolutely wonderful. And this pen in particular, you're getting part of Italy. You're literally getting Italian soil in the pen. That's pretty amazing. So on that side, you're getting an incredible resin pen that's made out of pieces of Mount Etna, literally. You're getting a very novel cap secure mechanism. You're getting a very effective and interesting titanium fill system. All of this for $700. On the Mont Blanc side, you're getting one of the finest nibs in the world, and that cannot be said enough. It is truly exquisite. The resin is resin, so we really don't know what that is. Fill that in with whatever speculation you'd like. Plenty of articles out there on it. The fill mechanism is a very competent piston fill mechanism. Now, one of the things that's sort of an intangible is that Mont Blanc right now, if you register your pen, you can take calligraphy lessons with them, and they're rather good. I've been doing them, I'm a little behind, but they actually have the replays out there so you can log in anytime and take these and take them over and over again, which I'm sure I will need to. So I think that's probably worth something. So you, I guess you have to ask yourself, is brand markup and calligraphy lessons worth the $200 delta between the two pens? And certainly the fact that the Mont Blanc is much more recognizable. But for this case, and for us here, I'd have to give the value proposition to Visconti. I just feel that you're getting a much more robust pen with some interesting and unique features that you don't find on any other pen. So I feel like that $700 is better spent on the Visconti. So now we're going to get to the big moment. Which one would I choose? Okay, so now we're getting to the end and we have to choose which one of these two magnificent pens is better. We have the Mont Blanc 149, that venerable classic pen, or the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age, a fairly new upstart made of absolutely incredible materials. So the Mont Blanc 149 is made of inferior materials in my opinion, but it has an absolutely amazing nib. The rest of the features are classic, but fairly uninspired. 
The Visconti is an original design. You can love it or hate it. It's a little weird, but it's actually kind of cool. It has a fantastic fill mechanism. I love this grainy and interesting lava resin. It's absolutely beautiful. I didn't even mention that you can customize the cap if you want to. The clip is actually really nice. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I quite like this sort of crescent not quite crescent clip, it's rather brilliant. And the hook cap is really nice as well. It really doesn't come apart, which is great. So I'd have to say that if I'm going to say which one of these two pens is better, the Visconti Homo Sapiens is a better pen. However, now we come to the bombshell. Which one of these two would I choose or in my case, since I do have both, which one would I hold on to? So if someone were to take one of these away from me, which one would I let go? Well, I hate to say it guys, you might be surprised. I mean, this thing is awesome. It has so much going for it. This one is classic. I love this. You've seen my videos on it. So after all the time I spent together, could I just toss this Montblanc 149 aside and go with the new Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age? Could I be so callous? Well, I have to admit, truth in fact, no, I'd give up the Visconti in a minute, to be honest with you. I mean, I love this pen. It's a little crazy. It's beautiful in the hand. It's fun to write with, and I'm very glad I own it, and I don't want to give it up. However, the Mont Blanc 149, it's just a better writing experience, and for all the great features in the world, if the writing experience isn't absolutely fantastic, then... I have to choose the pen that has it, and this one has it. You can write for a long time without your hand getting tired, and it's just absolutely brilliant. But I love both of these pens. I feel very fortunate that my wife loves me and has bought me both of these, so I'm a very lucky guy. But if it were me, and I was choosing a Grail pen, and I had to choose between them, despite all these awesome features, I would go with the Mont Blanc 149. And even holding them right now, this thing is heavier. And that, that means a lot. Well, what did you think of that bombshell? Which one of these pens would you choose? I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments, please do. And if you made it all the way to the end of my video, please take that as a sign that you should subscribe. I know about half of you don't subscribe to my channel. I would just really appreciate it because we're a small channel and it's really tough to get noticed here on YouTube and that would just help me a lot. So I'd appreciate it. Also, memberships are available for this channel. And right now I'm doing a letter exchange with each of the members. It's so much fun. How, when was the last time you had a pen pal? So that's what we're doing for Cognoscenti and Illuminati members. So you can become a member and join us in the letter exchange. I release new videos each week especially Fridays at noon. So I promise we will see each other again further down the road. So take care of yourself and thanks for watching.